Welcome to another episode of Getting Started with Proxmox 8. Today we're going to be looking a little bit at firewalls. So when I was first learning about Proxmox firewalls, one of the hardest things for me to do was understand really how the firewall structure worked. And the documentation describes it as a top-down firewall. So you have to have your firewall enabled in data center in order for anything to work. Then you have to have your firewall enabled on your server in our case we're calling it PVE, in order for anything to work downstream. And then your containers and VMs also have to have their own firewall enabled in order for it to work on them. But let's take a look here at our server and come up here to firewall rules. Notice there's no firewall rules and our firewall by default is turned on on this server. Now we really can't tell much about the state here like we can in data center, which we'll get to in a minute, but the firewall is enabled. Now here in data center, heading to firewall, you can see we also have no rules and our default incoming traffic rule is to drop all traffic. So I know how to turn my firewall off in an emergency and I'll show you that here in just a second. But let's go ahead, turn this on and enable it. Now this should drop all traffic because there's no rules and our default policy for incoming traffic is to drop it. So let's refresh and we can refresh a few times here. And as I'm refreshing, you notice that I'm still able to access the web interface. Odd because there's no rules. So let's come down here to the server and go to firewall and let's add a rule for incoming traffic and let's call it, tell it to drop and enable this rule. Press add and let's watch what happens here and it may take a few refreshes. There we go. We have a web interface because that's what's cached but notice we have no real access to anything below data center and even data center here is not giving us any information. We can't communicate at all with our servers and we know nothing about what's going on. All right, so let's open our shell. In your case, you're going to need to have a keyboard and monitor in order to access this. At this point, SSH won't work because we've blocked out SSH. But hard connected to your terminal, you can log in, of course, with your root and your password that you set up during your installation. That should be the same root credentials as you use for your server for your web interface. And let's enter the command PVE stop or PVE dash firewall space stop and hit enter. Now we've returned back and let's see what happens here when we refresh. There we go. We have our web interface back and we're able to communicate with the server. As you can tell, we should have dropped all traffic at the point of enabling the firewall at the data center according to the documentation, but we didn't. We had to add a rule. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this rule, come up to data center again, go to firewall, and let's add a rule here to drop all traffic again. We'll enable the rule, tell it to drop, press add. Now I have to turn the firewall back on, which this will happen after the server restarts, or we can enter the command PVE dash firewall space start. And let's see what happens here. We can't even get any information. We're completely locked out. You notice we're in a continuous loading pattern. So if I exit this window and I tried to log in, we can't get anything at all. So we are indeed locked out still. We'll turn it off again and we're in. All right. So we kind of understand now the structure of the firewall. We can begin setting up some rules. The first thing I like to have in my rule set under data center is a rule that drops all traffic. Now, the higher on this list a rule is, the more dominant it is. So this rule right now would drop all traffic no matter what. It should be your last rule. But we'll get to moving rules around here in a minute. Let's make a rule that's going to allow us to work with our web interface. And as a rule of thumb, unless you have easy access to your terminal with a mouse and keep or a keyboard and monitor, I would suggest you virtualize a practice environment for your server to at least practice getting some allow rules to your firewall so you make sure everything works before you go ahead and put these rules on your main server. And that's what you can see I have here is a virtualized machine of Proxmox that we're working within. So let's go ahead and create a rule. So let's go up to add and let's add a rule to unlock our web interface here. 
So our direction of traffic will be in. We want to enable the rule. We want to accept traffic. We want a protocol of TCP because it's a web interface. And we want a destination port of eight or 8006. And we're not going to worry about creating any particular IP rule or anything here, but we will get to that here in a minute. So let's add. And we noticed that this rule came out on top and then our drop rule is on bottom. So we can head back because we turn this off. We can head back to the web interface here or the command line here and let's start it again. And the firewall should be active. So refreshing this time we noticed that we still have access to our web interface. We're able to communicate with our server, get statistics, get data center information, and whatnot. We're up and running, and we're healthy. But if we were to try to, say, ping this server, we don't get any information back. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, and I'm not going to show you how to fix that. But the other problem would be, is what, what happens if we SSH to our server? There's also no SSH of so let's look at how to enable that and then how to maybe control it a little bit more so only my computer could SSH to it. So heading back to our web interface, since this would we'd want to apply this only to data center traffic, we'd go to firewalls, we'd again create an add rule, and we'd add traffic that was incoming. Protocol for SSH, it's going to be TCP. Our destination port will be 22. And let's press add. Now, let's see if we can SSH in. And there we go. We can. Now, let's go ahead and log in. And we're logged into our server. And so SSH now works. Now, what happens if I want to just limit that to a computer. So here at this rule for 22, we can hit edit and our source here, let's enter just an arbitrary IP address to show you that it will only allow an IP address. So let's go 192.168.4.0. Five, one, and press OK. Now coming up here and trying to SSH, you can see we're again blocked. Our IP address is 192.168.534. So editing this rule to that IP address and pressing OK and trying to SSH, we can again log into the server. So what if you wanted to block traffic on a particular server or VM or something like that? Well, now that we have traffic set up for the data center, let's go ahead and explore how to control traffic on our server. So selecting our server, going to firewall, we can go ahead and let's start by just adding a block rule so we can explore this. We've enabled it in data center. So let's see what happens if we block it here at the server level. So incoming traffic, we want to drop. We want to enable the rule. The protocol is going to be TCP. And since we're looking to block SSH traffic, our destination port will be 22. And let's hit add. Now this rule should block us from being able to SSH in, even though our server or our data center says it's allowed. Let's go ahead and explore this by trying to SSH in. And you can see we're indeed blocked out. Now disabling this rule results in us being able to log in. And you noticed I didn't have to disable this rule by going in, clicking the rule and going to edit and changing the box. There's a nice convenient box right here that we can go ahead and check to enable and disable the rule. But since the rule is in data center, we don't need to apply the rule to the server and so forth down the chain unless we want a different behavior for that server or container or VM. I'm going to go ahead, pause this video and create a quick container so we can look more at rules inside of containers. Okay. Okay, so now that we've learned about some rules in the data center and rules on the server, let's take a look at rules on our particular VM or container. So I went ahead and I created a container, just a simple web server container running NGNX, which is going to show the default web page for NGNX. And you can notice here under our server, we have no firewall rules set to allow this web server to come through. And we still have our default drop all rule set in, in our data center along with all of our other rules. 
rules. But yet we're viewing a web page hosted on this server through this container. So let's look at the rules we need to apply to maybe secure this website a little bit more and how everything behaves. So let's first start by selecting the container and going to firewall, clicking the drop down, selecting options, and we notice there's no firewall turned on. Let's turn the firewall on, press OK. Now let's see if this particular web page still loads. I'll copy the IP address, close the window, open the window, and you notice it doesn't. And that's because this top data center drop all rule is now applied to the container because we turned on the firewall. Our also our default policy of all incoming traffic is to drop it. All right, so now let's go to firewall and let's add a rule to make this work. So traffic's coming in. We're going to accept that traffic. We want to enable it. It's TCP traffic and our destination port is going to be 80. Let's add that and let's go ahead, open a new tab. And there we go. We have our web page back up and working. Now, if I was to open this container here at this point, press console, type in IPA, you can see that that is the IP address to that container. Now let's go and try to establish an SSH connection. You can see that we're unable to establish an SSH connection here. And if I wanted to, again, add that SSH connection, incoming, accept, TCP, port 22, and there you have it, we're able to establish an SSH connection. So with this, I hope you learned a little bit about how Proxmox firewalls work, how to set up and configure them, how to disable the firewall if you have problems, and maybe a few little special things for learning about firewalls before you applied them to your own server. As always, have a good night, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help virtualize everything continue to grow.